Ladies and gentlemen, may I present for your intellectual and philosophical pleasure the creature. Chat Chili, you've got questions. I've got a plan. Back to my man Sam with his question on chat. How do I get shredded without losing my muscle? And is the ketogenic diet right for me? I've given you guys some of the science behind it, explaining the biochemistry of how your body responds to food. We've gone over the pros, we've gone over the cons. At this point, I'd like to take a moment and take a look at what a ketogenic diet might actually look like. Uh, in this sample here, I have a pretty basic one worked out. Uh, with foods that I like to eat, I really like ketogenic diets actually, um, just as far as the food choices. I like eating as much red meat as I possibly can. Um, I like fish, I like bacon, I like all those things. I'm not really a huge fan of potatoes or rice or anything like that. I don't know anyone that's like, man, I just love a good bowl of rice. Um, so, I mean, yeah, carbs are, I mean, I won't make the argument that they're not essential um, or that you know they're good for athletic performance, but I'm not all that crazy about, yeah, oh man, you know, a white potato is just so good. Uh, I'd much rather have a big juicy steak. But in any case, my personal preferences aside, taking a look at this diet here, uh, it's roughly 2,000 calories if you don't include the snacks pre-workout and post-workout. So that would be on days where maybe you're going to train a little bit harder. Um, I don't want to prescribe a, a workout plan with the diet necessarily, so I kind of separated them. But it's roughly 2,000 calories with about 80% fat, um, and it's about 15% protein and about 5% carbohydrates. Um, mind you, some of that carbohydrate is going to come down because they actually include the fiber in it as well, just simply because of the fact that sometimes if you eat enough fiber, you can kind of bump insulin up just a little bit. So looking at it from the way it's set up though, um, we've got like a 80% fat diet here. So the first thing we're going to look at is your breakfast. For breakfast you're going to have four slices of bacon with one egg and then you're going to have two tablespoons of butter. Now you can either cook your bacon in butter, you can cook your eggs in butter, you can make your eggs and put two tablespoons of butter into it and then fold it over like an omelet. It's absolutely delicious when you do that. Or if you're familiar with uh, the Bulletproof Executive, there's something called Bulletproof Coffee and what you can do is you can take your two tablespoons of butter put it in a blender, pour your coffee on top of it, and then you know blend it until it's all foamy and frothy. And it actually it tastes pretty good. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of that. I would much rather put my butter into my egg and fold it over like a nice big omelet and have all the butter in there. Uh, but I'm totally open to however you like to eat it. So go for the coffee if that's your thing. The next thing I want to hit on is lunch. So for lunch, I picked a fatty meat. Um, it's well relatively fatty, you have three ounces of salmon, two cups of spinach, because the ketogenic diet is not void of vegetables and things like that, it's just low in carbohydrates. So we're going to do two cups of spinach, and with that we're going to have two tablespoons of coconut butter. It's also called coconut manna, it's absolutely delicious, and I find that if you take two tablespoons of it and you melt it on top of your salmon, so once you make your salmon you just put a couple little tablespoons on top and let it melt onto it, it's absolutely delicious. Salmon with coconut is a really nice combination. And then the last thing is um, you want to cook your salmon in butter and then you can even toss your spinach in and saute it if you don't like eating raw spinach. I'm not particularly a fan of raw spinach. I think it's kind of uh, tasteless. So I really like cooking my spinach in butter or um, duck fat, rendered duck fat's delicious. Uh, a lot of those things add some flavor to the spinach. The next thing we're going to hit on is dinner. Dinner is pretty simple. You're just going to have five ounces of ground beef and you're going to cook that in butter. And you can go ahead and be liberal with that butter. I mean, toss two tablespoons of butter into the pan, let it all melt, and then just dump your ground beef in. Probably like an 80-20 grind. I like really fatty ground beef. Um, one, it tastes better. <laughs> two, I think it cooks better because I think the lean stuff doesn't cook very well. It tends to like dry out. Um, and then, of course, uh, if you're getting grass-fed, you're getting some CLA in there, you're getting some good essential fats. Now, if we head down to the bottom half of the board here, I'm going to talk a little bit about what you might have as a snack or something like that, or what you're going to eat pre and post workout if it's a day where you're training. Because obviously you're not going to do a pre and post workout on rest days. So for your snack, just grab like 10 to 12 macadamia nuts. Um, macadamia nuts are high in monounsaturated fatty acid, so I prefer to eat them by themselves. Uh, the reason being our body preferentially likes to store um, monounsaturated fatty acids. If you look at the composition of body fat, it's mostly monounsaturated fatty acids. It's actually very little saturated fatty acid, and the reason is because your body really likes to burn saturated fatty acids. So um, saturated fat, it's 
it's easier for you to eat saturated fat with a carbohydrate and not store it than it is for you to eat monounsaturated fatty acids because your body will store it if there's any insulin present. The next thing we're going to hit on is pre-workout because I know you guys are probably sitting there going, but Chad, there's not enough carbs. That's true. They're, if you're a carb adapted athlete and you're, you're burning glucose and you're not keto adapted, um, there's not going to be enough carbs. You're going to feel a little bit flat. But once you're keto adapted, I find that MCT oil, or you can also use coconut oil because coconut oil is also high in MCTs. Um, now Foods makes an MCT oil. It's derived from palm and coconut. Uh, it's actually not bad tasting at all. Uh, I really like it, and you can even put a tablespoon of it into coffee. Uh, I know some people really like having their cup of coffee pre-workout because they like getting that caffeine. So toss a tablespoon of MCT oil in there, mix it up, and boom, you've got your fats, and this is a saturated fatty acid. It's medium chain triglycerides, is what MCT stands for. Your body actually burns them very fast. It's a lot like um, how your body would burn carbohydrates, actually. MCTs go directly to the liver, are converted into ketones, and then you instantly have energy. So it's a nice thing to do pre-workout. I would recommend probably about 30 minutes before your workout. That way it has a little bit of time to digest and get through your system and get those ketones really flowing. And then post-workout, I am a huge fan of whey protein. I think whey protein is the best protein out there. I've tried pretty much everything that I can. Uh, if they make it, I've tried it. And I find that the whey protein, uh, I recover faster, I'm less sore. It seems to have a better response just in general. I seem to, to get way more noticeable effect from whey protein than I do from trying like brown rice or um, even like the beef protein isolate. I know that there's a couple companies out there that make products like that. I don't want to knock this product. They're not bad products. I just think that a good quality whey protein works better. So that's a pretty simple idea here. Um, obviously you can bump it up or down. You know, if you're eating more calories, you just increase the quantities. If you're eating less calories, you just simply decrease the quantities. But this is a pretty good snapshot of what your diet might look like on a typical day if you were following a ketogenic diet. Um, and again, I still really like the MCT pre-workout, pre fats pre-workout, and protein post-workout. That way you stimulate that protein synthesis. And also, um, whey is very insulinogenic. And so you're going to get a little bit of an insulin bump um, whenever you drink whey protein post-workout, which is kind of a nice way to trigger your body to get into that anabolic response. It kind of turns off the catabolism. You know, it downregulates the cortisol, which of course you're going to run up your cortisol whenever you're working out a little bit, which is not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing at all. It's totally natural. You want it to happen because you want muscle breakdown. That way there's something to rebuild. But the nice thing about it is once you hit that whey protein post-workout, that breakdown process stops and that building process begins. So I hope that was simple to understand. I hope that, that kind of fills in a lot of gaps. I hope that I didn't leave anything out that people are going to have a lot of questions on. But if you do, fire away. Um, you know, I'm always more than happy to explain this. So that's all I got for you guys today. What's the matter with you people? I was joking! Don't you know a joke when you hear one? Ha <laughs> ha!